Hello, friends. The Charlottetown Blue Fins, our local swim team here in Prince Edward Island, is holding a fundraiser so they can raise funds to purchase some new equipment. Please consider donating even a small amount to help support a team that helps so many children. We may be located far from you, but your contribution will make a real difference in many young kids' lives. A link to the donation page can be found in our latest stories show notes. Thank you. Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say hello to Paige and Lane in Melbourne, Australia. Hello to Harold and Harvey from Taichung, Taiwan. Hello to Layla. Hello to Avin. Hello to Eva from Columbia, Maryland. And hello to Theo and Oliver in Lakewood, Colorado. Your daddy loves you both so much. I'd like to say a happy belated birthday to Brooklyn, who had a birthday on March 5th. Happy birthday from your mom, dad, Ben, grandma, and Shiloh. A happy belated birthday to River Rose from Newport, Sydney, Australia, who turned three on Saturday, March 18th. Wishing you a magical birthday, River. You are so loved. Love from Mama. Happy belated birthday to Archie, who turned seven on March 16th. Happy belated birthday to Cece, who turned four on March 19th. Happy belated birthday to Marley Dibabista from Fort Thomas, Kentucky, who turned nine on March 19th. Happy belated birthday to Ollie Bastion from Auckland, New Zealand, who turned five Sunday, March 19th. Happy birthday to Evelyn Juniper Sheldon from Portland, Oregon, who is turning six on March 21st. Happy birthday from Mommy, Daddy, and Blueberry. Happy birthday to Tessa, who is turning 10 on March 21st. Happy birthday to Shrovin from Round Rock, Texas, who has a birthday on March 23rd. Happy birthday to Evie from Tampa, Florida, who is turning seven on March 24th. Happy birthday to Maggie, who is turning seven on March 24th and likes Minecraft. Happy birthday to Phoebe from New York City, who is turning seven on March 24th. And happy birthday to Theo from Lakewood, Colorado, who will be four in April. Happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. Shoutouts and birthday wishes are one way we give thanks to our supporters. If you would like to support us and receive more bedtime entertainment like this, all ad-free, please visit our support page at sleeptightstories.org support. Thank you. Esther is tired when she drags herself out of bed in the morning. She has been awake replaying the story over and over again in her head. She wishes it was her instead of Gimble who is traveling with Selena. But it is not just her who is slow moving this morning, as her brother is also moving very slow, which is so unlike him. They head off to school, and Esther has another day of boring school ahead of her. The Magical Book of Dreams, Part 8 Esther dragged herself out of bed. Sleep had come slowly the night before, an after-effect of an overactive mind. She kept replaying the story over and over again in her head, 
trying to imagine it was her and not Gimbal of Isle Dore who was traveling with Selena. Of course, any thoughts of travel ultimately led to the unknown realm and her father's disappearance. She would have to put those thoughts out of her mind if she and her brother were going to get to school in time. Time to get up, Squirt, Esther said to her little brother. I'm up, her little brother said as he walked out of his room at a slower than usual pace. Can I wash up first? I feel like my eyes are full of dragon candy syrup. That might be because you eat so much of it. I bet if I squeezed you real tight, dragon candy syrup might start flowing out your nose, Esther replied, pretending to reach for him as he walked by in the small hallway between their rooms. Yuck, you're gross, he said as he ran past her into the bathroom, slamming the wooden door behind him. After Esther and her brother washed up and put on some clean clothes, they joined their mother in the kitchen, where she was preparing breakfast. She looked as tired as Esther felt. Good morning, little ones, her mother said. It's bread and cheese with gooseberry jam again this morning. I'll go to the market later today to get some goose eggs for tomorrow. Esther grabbed herself a cup of tea and goat's milk for her brother and sat down to eat breakfast. Eat quickly. You don't want to be late for school, Esther's mother added. I'm not sure I would miss anything if I didn't go today. How much do I really have to know about growing a garden and making clothes? I preferred when we were focusing on literature and math, Esther said. Let's not argue about why you need to learn these skills again. We are self-sufficient here in Shirewood, and at your age, you need to know how to look after yourself, Esther's mother said with frustration, and how to look after your future partner, her brother said with a laugh. Esther punched him in the shoulder. The last thing on Esther's mind was settling down in her own cottage. Eat your breakfast, Squirt. We have to leave soon, Esther said. Esther sat in class listening to Headmaster Eileen review the previous section on growing food. Now, let's take a break from agriculture and look at something new. Oh, please make it literature, Esther thought. Please, please, please. For the next cycle, we will focus on making your own clothes from the materials that we have available here in Shirewood and the surrounding countryside. This is important for you to learn so that we can all be self-sufficient when you leave school and go out into the world. Esther let out a great big sigh. Do you have anything you wanted to add, Esther? Headmaster Eileen asked in her most penetrating voice. No, Headmaster, Esther replied, her face turning red. Try to pay attention, child, or I will send you home with another note for your mother, she boomed. Now, the first thing we need to develop is a deep understanding of the materials we will use to create the clothes you will make. After materials, we will look at patterns. You will need to create a pattern for the clothes you will make. Of course, you can also use existing patterns from the archives, but I know you young people like to look different than your elders. It didn't take long for Esther to get over her embarrassment and start staring out the window, looking at the area beyond Shirewood and daydreaming. As her mind repeated over and over again Gimbal's adventure with Selena and Avara, her thoughts turned to her father. Was the reason she enjoyed reading the book because she longed to travel to the world beyond? Or was it to gain some idea of what life was like in places more exotic than where she lived? Or 
Did she hope she would find some clue as to why her father had not returned and what might have happened to him? Her father left when Esther was young, but he still had a huge influence on her life. Her desire to see the world, travel, and be extraordinary could all be traced back to her father. As she remembered him, he had had many of these characteristics. Her mother was always the one who provided for her, but her father seemed to shape her destiny. She remembered the day he left vividly. He had been traveling a great deal that year. He worked for Shirewood, securing trade for various goods with other places in the realm. Shirewood was largely self-sufficient and tried to avoid outside influences. However, there was still a steady supply of goods coming and going. Esther had often thought that her father used his work as an excuse to travel because, other than spending time with his family, nothing made him smile more. The day he left, he came into her room early in the morning and hugged her. His face was always covered in whiskers, which meant that whenever he gave her a hug or they played, her face was always red with scratches. Are you going on a trip away from Shirewood again, Daddy? Esther had said to him. No, little flower. I'm going to take that trip that I have been talking about for a long time now, her father said. Esther remembered that that made her more alert. And after she wiped her eyes, she had said, But Daddy, isn't the unknown realm dangerous? No, it's not dangerous, little flower. All things worth doing have some risk. Otherwise, they wouldn't be worth doing, he said. Don't worry. I'll return with stories and candy before you realize I'm gone. You promise, Daddy? I promise. That was the last time that Esther got a hug from her father. It had been a long time since he had left, and she still missed him very much. Okay, class, that's it for today. Tomorrow we will start this cycle's topic in earnest. And for those of you who spend more time daydreaming than paying attention in class, Headmaster Eileen said, looking at Esther, remember that you need to pass this cycle to graduate. Class dismissed. Esther's face turned red again. Esther walked quickly out of school, avoiding all the kids gathered in groups. She used to spend time talking to a number of friends, but like she had been with Dobby and Winky, she had been avoiding talking to anyone since she found the book. She walked out of the schoolyard via the smaller exit that the younger students often took en route to the small sweets store, where they would gorge themselves with candy. After passing the sweet store, she took the fork in the dirt path and quickly walked home, avoiding the stone-covered moss. Arriving home, her mother wasn't outside doing chores as usual. She timed these chores for when she and her brother came home. She had said to Esther that she liked to watch as they walked down the path toward home. Walking into the house, she saw her mother drinking tea at the table. Are you okay, mother? Esther asked. Oh, yes. I need a little bit of tea before I finish making dinner. I'm a little sleepy this afternoon. How was school? It was the usual boring stuff, Esther replied. Well, at least I don't see any notes from your teacher in your hand. Why don't you make yourself a cup of tea and sit with me before your brother comes in the front door like a strong wind? Esther made some tea, sat quietly, and asked, Why did Daddy not come home from his last trip? 
Where did that question come from? Her mother asked, somewhat surprised. I guess the book we are reading is bringing back thoughts of him. The stories in the book don't make it seem like traveling was particularly dangerous. So what makes the unknown realm so different? Her mother sighed. Oh, you are getting older. I guess we can have these conversations when your brother is not around. Anything with the word unknown is always deemed more dangerous or suspicious by the elders. No one talks about the unknown realm anymore, and many who might know the answers to what lies beyond don't share much of what they know. When Shirewood was a popular destination for those who wanted to travel there, travelers started disappearing, and the rumors about what happened spread throughout the region. It became ridiculous, and so the elders put a stop to all the talk. Now with no information at all, it's more mysterious than ever. What do you know, Mother? Esther asked. Your father used to talk to the travelers who marveled at the beauty of the world beyond this kingdom. He became obsessed with seeing it. He described the land as a place of great beauty. I would argue that there was enough beauty right here at this table. Her mother took a drink of tea and continued. It was second-hand information, so I'm sure it was exaggerated. But your father told of a land where nature reigned supreme, where the landscape was vast and diverse, and where the colors and textures of the natural world would take your breath away. He described pristine forests of towering trees, with sunlight filtering down through the leaves to create patterns on the forest floor. Wildflowers blooming in vibrant hues. Travelers told him of lakes and waterfalls with crystal clear water. But this could describe many places in the kingdom, Esther said. Yes, but we know of these places. We are naturally curious and many still desire to explore and discover new things, especially your father. His curiosity and sense of adventure were part of what I found so attractive about him. Many elders discourage this adventurism because they fear that many youths will leave Shirewood for the excitement of the castles elsewhere in the kingdom and not return. But why then hasn't Daddy returned? If it's just the idea of seeing something new, wouldn't he come back and share with us what he saw? Esther asked, starting to get emotional. When I was young, the elders described the kingdom where we live as the upper kingdom and the unknown realm as the lower kingdom. I thought they were just describing their perceptions of superiority, but I suspect that it describes the physical features. Your father told of one traveler who attempted to go to the unknown realm, but returned when she couldn't see a way back. She described a very steep downward path. The route may be impossible to return on, like how a mountain is easier to traverse, but difficult to climb. Some have said that the path constantly changes, making it impossible to use the same route twice. Others have said that the only way to enter the unknown realm is through a portal from which there is no return. All this is hearsay, so it's difficult to know the truth. I know your father would never stop trying to return if he could. I miss him, mother, Esther said. I know. I miss him too, her mother replied. Then, like a hurricane wind, Esther's little brother stormed into their house, face stained with dragon candy. Why is everyone so serious, he asked. I'm starving. What's for dinner?
And that's the end of this part. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>